Hello folks, Matthew Peterson here from Pragmatic Works. And what I want to bring to you in this next episode of our YouTube series of building an app in Teams is how to use the patch function. So if you've been following along with us from the beginning to end, we're going to continue adding on to the app. If you haven't, take a look in the description below to see how we got to this point. But the whole purpose of this video is to show you how to use a patch function in order to quickly update a record without having to go to an edit form to do those edits. So let's take a look at how that's done. So as you see, we're in our student check-in and check-out, and what we've only done so far is we've been able to create records that do a check-in of our students. And so we have this button here that if we say, see current location of a student, we can now see the locations of our students and when they were checked in. But what we have not added into this is how can we check our students out? And the idea is here is I want my teachers to be able to check out the student by just simply clicking a button and updating the record without having to go to the form and selecting the checkout date and the time. So many use cases for patch and this is how we're going to use it inside of this application. So let's take a look here. The first thing I'm going to do is inside of this gallery, I'm going to go into my template cell and simply just add in a nice little text label so that we can see what is the current checkout date time for our individual students. So if I were to point this to my column that has the checkout date and time, we'll see that for right now I have checked out one of my students, but these other students have not been checked out yet, which is why we're not seeing the data. Well, maybe I want my users to see that if they've checked out, see the checkout time, but if not, say that, hey, you have not checked them out. Well, we can do this with a little bit of conditional logic. So here's how I'm going to modify this formula up here, and I'll zoom on in. So I'm on my label, and I'm going to do a nice little if check, and I'm going to say if is blank this item dot checkout date and time. So basically we're going to say, does the checkout date and time column have a value currently in it? If it is blank, this returns a true value. And if it's true, I then say, what do I want the label to display? So I'm going to do a comma, and I'm going to say, um, not checked out. Something simple as that. So if the is blank is true, we're going to say that means there's no data. So we're going to say, hey, they have not been checked out. If is blank is false, which means there is data, then I want to show the actual checkout date time. So I'm going to say this item dot checkout date and time. And then I'm going to wrap that off with the parentheses here and close on out. And as we can see, now inside of our application, these three students or multiple students have not been checked out, so they're not currently showing any data, so it says not checked out. So that's the first thing, just putting in a label here. Now the next thing is I want to put in a quick button for my users to click on and then simply be able to take the checkout date column and update it to today's time. So to do that, I'm first going to go into my template cell of the gallery and I'm going to insert a nice little button here. And then I'm just going to bring this button on over right here. I'm not going to worry about stylizing it and making it picture perfect and pretty because we just want to see how do we use the formula. So I'm just going to simply say check out. And if you watch the next episode in the series, I will come and make sure that the button looks a little bit nicer here. So what do I want this button to do? Well, on the click of the button, I want it to take this current record and I want to go to the checkout date and time column and put in the exact time of when the user clicks the button. So how is that done without using a form? Well, it's called using the patch command and there's many use cases for using patch. So I'm going to go to my on select property of my button. And then up here, I'm going to start off with the patch command. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here for the formula window. So it's a little bit easier to see. So the first thing I start off with is the patch command. And as we can see, the patch will apply updates to a specified row and then make the changes on the data source. Perfect. That's what I want to do. So now I have to tell it what data source do I want to do this on. Well, in my case, my table is called the student check in and outs. So that is the data source. Now I put in a comma. Now it says, well, what record do you want to do this to? Well, I'm in a gallery. So whatever button I click on is accessing a record in the gallery. So that's the record I want to do the update to. So I simply put in the function, this item, which refers to the record itself. So this item 
then I put in a comma, and now I put in the update. Now to put in this update, I have to start off with a curly brace. And when I put in the curly brace, we get to see all of our different columns on this data source. And this is how I could update multiple columns all at the same time. But in this case, I just want to update one. And what do I want to update? The checkout date and time. So I'm giving it the column reference of where the update should occur. Now I tell it what do I want to use. Well, I wanted to use the exact date and time that we click the button. So we use a function called now. So I close off the now function. Now I need to close off the actual update of the record. So I do another curly brace. And then finally, I need to close off the patch command. And so I put this in right here. So again, this is going to go to our table. It's going to go to the record we've selected, go to the checkout date and time column, and then insert the now timestamp here. So let's see if we can get this to operate correctly. So I'm going to hit play here, and I'm going to click checkout for this record here. So I click on checkout, and boom, notice it updates to today's date and to today's time, which is beautiful. So technically, the patch command is done with in this application. We've shown how to update a record, but we want to make this a little bit more better for our end users. We don't want our user to now be able to click the checkout button another time here because they've already checked them out. So I'm going to use some conditional logic to basically either hide the button or we can make it display mode disabled if the student has already been checked out. I'm going to go with the visibility property here. So what I'm going to do is close out of our preview here. So let me close out of our preview and I'm going to come back to the button itself and I'm going to come on over here to its visible property. So basically I want to the visible property set to true right now. If I set it to false, then we don't see it. Well, I want to make this dynamic. And the idea is if there's already data in the checkout date and time column, the visibility should be false. If there is no data, then we should be able to see the button so we can click on it. So we're going to use another if condition here. And actually, I don't have to use an if condition because visible is only going to reference the value of true or false. So for that being said, as long as I put in a logical condition that returns true or false, I don't have to use an if statement. So what I want to do here, so I'm going to say is blank. What do I want to check? I want to check the current item and I want to check the checkout date and time column. So what is this going to do? So if this is blank, that returns a true, which means we should be able to see the button. There's no data inside, so we should be able to click the checkout in order to do the checkout. If it is not blank, which returns a false, the visibility should be set to false. So if I come over here and hit play, notice now I can't hit my checkout button for these because they've already been checked out. If I come over here, click my checkout, now it has data, so the is blank returns a false, and now my button is no longer here. So this is just one use case for using patch and using some conditional logic, and this is how I wanted to do it in my student check-in and check-out app. Uh, if you like the video, please like, stay, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well so you can stay up to date of all the videos that we post. And if there's anything that we can help you out with, please contact me. Uh, we'd love to partner with you to help make your business processes and solutions even better. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.